Let's turn now to the turmoil facing the Victorian Police Service. The state government there has ordered a sweeping review into the senior command of the force, even though it says it still has faith in the police chief, Simon Overland. With multiple inquiries now afoot, the police union says the force is in crisis and it's calling for a royal commission. Josie Taylor reports. No, I'm just putting the facts out there. You can't really deny this is a sacking, can you? Oh, absolutely. I'm confident about what I've done. I clearly have the power to do what I've done. There was an air of resolute determination to the publicity offensive launched by Victoria's Police Chief Commissioner this morning. Simon Overland is fighting for his reputation and his career. I accept that I've suffered damage as a result of these last uh, few weeks. It's been um, difficult in some ways to uh, watch what's been happening. What's happening is a very public clash between the Chief Commissioner and his popular deputy, Englishman Sir Ken Jones, who recently tendered his resignation. Matters boiled over on Friday when Mr Overland had Sir Ken escorted from police headquarters. He refuses to say why, but described it as interesting that correspondence between the two has been made public. Do you think Sir Ken Jones leaked information to the media about investigations? Well, I'm not going to answer a question like that. I mean, it's not proper for me to answer a sort of speculative question like that. Sir Ken Jones isn't yet telling his side of the story. The Police Association claims his resignation was due to frustration with Force Command and its mishandling of a long list of recent scandals. And we are talking about a, uh, a police force command that, having wasted $60 million on a computer program, has then gone back to government and said, we'd like to pick the pockets of Victorian battlers to the tune of another $100 million. Well, you know, that, that's appalling financial mismanagement. Then there were the administrative failures that led to children living with sex offenders. Claims the Chief Commissioner released misleading crime statistics under pressure from the former Labor government a failure to identify prisoners on parole who went on to commit murders and reports of sinister connections between corrupt police and gangland figure Carl Williams, who was murdered in Victoria's highest security prison. Sir Ken Jones was overseeing that investigation. Certainly our members uh, have now a crystal clear view uh, of where they see the future uh, and uh, the future of policing in Victoria uh, and uh, they don't believe it includes Simon Overland. For years, Victoria's powerful police union has resisted calls for a royal commission into corruption. Astonishingly, the same union is today leading calls for a royal commission into police leadership. Presumably a royal commission would open a whole number of issues up for public scrutiny. Are you ready for that? Oh, absolutely. The former lawyer for Carl Williams says he's not concerned Sir Ken Jones is no longer watching over what's probably Victoria's most sensitive police investigation. But Rob Starry says the case does need a brighter spotlight. Williams' involvement in the underworld and with corrupt police is something that might need to be more broadly examined through a judicial inquiry or a royal commission. Do you have concerns about the way he was dealt with in terms of Corrections Victoria and his placement within the prison? Absolutely. Um, even though Carl Williams apparently said that he wished to be placed in the cell with um, two, two people who he believed were um, close to him, um, there should have been a much more careful examination of that, that aspect in that process. Victoria's new government promised to set up a permanent anti-corruption commission. It's yet to be established. Are you concerned they might attempt to sack him? No, I'm not. Can they? Well, I mean, ultimately, they are the government, but they've got to have a proper basis on which to do that. And you say they don't have that basis? Well, I, I don't see what that basis is. And after a marathon cabinet meeting, the Premier and Police Minister agreed to back Simon Overland and his decision to oust Sir Ken Jones. I was advised by the Chief Commissioner of that uh, after the event, and it is the case that I'd have preferred to have been advised prior to the event. Uh, I want to make it clear that, be that as it may, 
I have faith in the Chief Commissioner of Police in the discharge of his duties. But at the same time as it backs Simon Overland, the government's ordered a sweeping review into the most senior members of the state's police force. The man conducting the inquiry has the power to enter any office of the state's top police, force them to answer questions and produce documents. That could go on for the next six months. The former head of the National Crime Authority says it's an untenable situation. Uh, I think his position is very difficult. Uh, I think this inquiry is being held because the government in the end wants to get rid of him uh, but doesn't quite have enough evidence uh, and they expect that the inquiry will produce the evidence and they will then dismiss him. The government will wait until its new inquiry and two others are finished before making a final decision. Josie Taylor with that report.